Hello, my name is Nikki Emilike, CEO of Nisden College. Welcome to Centerpoint Africa. And I've got special guest here today. It is gonna be an awesome, awesome day today. The program is centered on education, international politics and politics, and also community development. Right now, I've got special guests I need to talk about. The worshiper, Croydon Mayor, Susan Maddy. Hi, Nikki. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the amazing introduction. Uh, from, and I'm really thrilled to be here. I hope I can be able to provide some interesting stories about what it's like to be mayor of my hometown. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, it's a pleasure. Um, I've actually invited you here today, and it's to talk about community development. Please tell me about you and how you became um, a mayor. Right, well, there are kind of two steps along the way. Uh, from you, the mayor of the borough is chosen from the local councillors. In Croydon, we've got a, quite a lot of local councillors because we're a very, very populous and diverse borough. So we've actually got 70 councillors. Yes. Uh, from, and every year, those 70 councillors choose one from their number to be mayor. Yes. Uh, from, there's a special ceremony called Annual Council uh, from where the cho person that is pre-agreed to be mayor is nominated by the leader of the council and seconded by the, oppo the, the opposition, which makes it therefore a very neutral role. Uh, from, you become a local councillor uh, from by, uh, from, well, you have to get be elected to be the candidate uh, from, by your local party of choice. Yes. And you then put yourself forward to the electorate, and if you are successful, you then become a councillor through that route. Personally, though, my journey to become a local councillor was because, well, twofold. First, my parents always brought me up to have very strong views and to uh, articulate my views. I felt something wasn't right to say it. But I also found as I got older through my school years that I was the person that people turned to for advice. Okay. I was, I was Pat from EastEnders, essentially. Yeah, wow. Uh, from, uh, from various different things that were very, very influential when I was 16 that I was being told by friends. And I remember promising myself in one particular instance that I would never let two 16-year-old girls, as were, be full so lost in the wilderness if I could do anything about it in the future. So I swore I would do everything with my career and my life to try and make that so, better. So you preferred working with young people? Yes. Uh, from, well, that was what I know. And I became a counsellor uh, from 10 weeks after I was elected for the first I say after becoming a parent for the first time. Wow. Uh, from, so my eldest son, Theo, is six. And uh, from, I came mayor after a very, I say, sorry, I keep this, a councillor, after uh, from a very challenging year. Um, yes. It's very difficult getting elected in the first place, but I was also going through some very difficult things within my family. So it culminated with having the two things I most wanted in the world happening to me within 10 weeks of my job, getting elected, which is my dream job, and becoming a mum. Yeah. Within a few weeks of each other, after having had a very trying lead up. But it's hard if you become a counsellor so soon after becoming a new parent, not everything for not everything you do to be focused from that perspective. So when I became mayor, that became even more what I was going to talk about with my year. Madam Mayor, <laughs> well, um, I did know you earlier and I understood um, what you do within the community. Um, what is your role and how have you maintained your role being a mother and also being Madam Mayor? Right, uh, from, well the truth of the matter is every single day as Mayor and as a councillor is different. Yes. So the biggest challenge probably is finding inconsistency in babysitting. I'm very lucky because I've got some very, very supportive family, in particular my parents and even then in particular my mum who is available whenever I need her. Uh, from, it's actually her birthday today, so if you're watching, happy birthday, <laughs> Mum. Uh, from, and an incredibly supportive husband, who, uh, from, when I feel like my, I'm going a bit mad with all the intenseness yes. of the job, he's the calm, sensible, logical one that works it through. Uh, from, but it isn't easy, balancing the two things. But as I said, the truth is, I wouldn't ha not have either of them. Thing, yeah. uh, from it's the most important parts of my identity are as a mum and as a local councillor yeah. and then as mayor uh, from, because 
And I see the two as so intricately linked. Yes. Because while I use my it experiences is. and my understanding of being a mum yeah. to influence the decisions I take as a councillor and now as mayor, to the point where my entire mayoral year is themed around early life. Yeah. So everything about becoming a parent, whether it's through pregnancy, adoption, fostering, all the way taking you through to the end of the primary school years. Yes. Uh, from, so I've done a lot of work already in my few weeks in as mayor, uh, working with children's groups and mm. uh, from reaching out, becoming the voice for new mothers on the council. Yes, definitely. Great. Um, I know as being a mayor, you choose charity. So what's your chosen charity? Well, I've got three. Uh, from I've got Homestart Croydon, yes. which are an incredible local charity. Uh, from their remit is uh, from reaching families that are going through difficult times before they reach crisis points. So their work is very preventative. A lot of the time, if you're going for a difficult time, all you really need is some practical and sensible down-to-earth advice, and so uh, from a sort of parent role model figure to carry you through. Certainly, that was my experience when I was going through a difficult time in 2013. Yeah. Uh, from and so it's home start services and support would kick in before you reach the point where you need any social service involvement or you need any active council involvement. Also have the St Christopher's Hospice, uh, yes. from which are the hospice that look after Croydon and four other local oh, boroughs. Oh, okay. They are one of the well, one of the oldest hospices in the country, uh, from, yeah. and they've looked after my nan, my husband's best friend, and my husband's dad at the end. They're in the yeah. life. Uh, from mentioning my nan, the fi final charity is the Motor Neurone Disease Association. Oh, fantastic. Which, and both of my grandmothers suffered with motor neurone disease. Yeah. Which I think makes me genetically a bit of a ticking time bomb. So it's a very, very personal story. I don't know how much your from viewers know about motor neurone disease. Uh, from yes. It's a terrible, terrible condition because what it does is it attacks your ability to move, your ability to speak, your ability eventually even to eat. And then in the final stage is your ability to breathe whilst leaving your brain completely intact. Yes. So you are literally completely aware of watching your body fall apart around you. Yeah. It's a really horrible way to go. And I watched in 2013 whilst pregnant through a very, very challenging pregnancy. Yeah. My nan succumbing to that disease. It's, again, it has a lasting impact on you when you go through things like that. Wow, that's really great to hear. I also have another special guest. She's the director of Slum Aid. I would actually ask her to introduce herself. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Um, so my name is Julia Pepe. I'm director of Slum Aid. Slum Aid is a um, London-based charity. And um, we try to support, as our name, that's the name of the charity says, we try to support slum areas. Yeah. Um, we work with other charities. So we are outside the UK and inside the UK. We are uh, based here, but we want to look at the world and to see how we can help and support, provide help. So uh, our mission is to enable people to impact impacts on others lives so uh, when our founder 10 years ago Tony Suarez he uh, he has an Indian background he was traveling through India um, he saw that there was a great need okay. for um, uh, for help for support and he thought that um, putting in contact people around the world, connecting people around the world, and helping everyone to share their skills, their resources, their means, could create a different world, a better world. Um, we try to see a world, we want to see a world that is more equal, more sustainable. Um, and the idea of Slamade it was to um, provide everyone the opportunity to uh, to give something. Yes. So when we started, the uh, the main focus was on providing volunteers the right um, training, uh, the right resources for them to go and work with our local partners. Yes. And one main and important part is that we don't want to have just one particularly very healthy, very like very wealthy um, volunteer in our mind. We 
ideally would like to enable everyone to, to volunteer so everyone from every background could, could become part of these and money is a big part of, of this. So we oh great, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm actually a community developer myself. I have been helping the community both in the UK and also in Africa, especially in Nigeria. This program is actually one of my extension, when I say extension of what I definitely do, which is community development, enhancing and developing young people, adults, and providing training. So um, what also I want to ask to Madam Mayor, that will be to you. Um, literally, you've stated the, all the charities that you're going to be supporting. What are you expecting um, from, or what are the benefits of anyone that you want to support your charity? You mean what were the benefits for people that are supporting it? Or yeah, the support charity's point? Yes, on the charity's point. What I'm, what I'm trying to ask you is, in regards to what do you want the uh, the viewers to have in regards to the benefits of your of, of your charity right. yes definitely as i outlined start with home start in particular again yeah uh, from the work that home start do yeah i really can't praise enough uh, from generally speaking uh from if a child has to enter the care system in any way shape or form or a family needs to have involvement with social services yes then their life chances are severely Im impacted and they have a lot of extra challenges. Whereas if you can reach some people and just give them support at a practical and easier er earlier stage, that can really, really keep families together, it can keep social cohesion and it can really help a fundamentally and vitally help a community. Uh, from St Christopher's, uh, from the one thing that will happen to all of us is that eventually we, w we will pass away. Okay. Uh, from, and it's vital if we possibly can give you, you know, from a, the best end of life experience possible, but also provide the wraparound care that you as a, and your family need at that crucial time. Yes. Uh, from, it's I'm doing some work, for example, I'm doing uh, from called creating conversations, which is a fi uh, from extension of a project that's in Christopher's that already been running. Yeah. Where I'm going to be doing a uh, from event live over social media, probably on the on uh, from the 10th of October where we, we've got a panel of people that can to get, come together and kind of just tell their stories of loss and how that affected oh, them. Wow. Okay. So it's about the idea of encouraging people to have those conversations, firstly about what their wishes for their end-of-life care would look like, but also uh, from making sure that families are prepared to have those conversations when that point eventually does come to them and they know that they, where they can source those resources from and what uh, from support is available. Okay. And Motor Neuron Disease Association, there is no cure for that. It's, uh, from, it's going to kill you if you get it, uh, from, and you're going to suffer quite badly along the way. But what they do is they try and help pe uh, from people do with once they've had the diagnosis, but also they are funding incredibly huge amounts of amazing research into us, explaining why this condition happens. Yeah. Uh, from I don't know if any of your viewers remember the ice bucket challenge from a few years ago. Oh yes, I did remember. <laughs> I'm from Croydon. I did uh, do it myself. Yeah. It was oh, really. I'm so excited when we call when we say ice bucket. You know, yeah, it was it, it was it lovely, was incredible. Yes, and it, it was, was. It couldn't have been more fascinating timing because the ice bucket challenge uh, from was uh, came about in the, during the summer yes. after my nan had passed away. Yeah. And after my, believe it or not, my second grandmother, my, oh. I had just been diagnosed with it as well. So both of my grandmothers have had that condition. And so literally, we were just been able to get over the grief of losing one to hear be heard that we've got the same diagnosis from my other grandmother, and the ice bucket challenge hit. So it couldn't have been a more powerful thing. And they, the most new entities, were the people behind that association, were the people behind that campaign. Yes. And it really, we went from being kind of trying to explain to everybody every two minutes what was actually going to happen and why this was such a terrible and horrible diagnosis to have to everybody talking about it overnight. And it was the difference between the two times was absolutely yes. extraordinary. And I remember thinking, not only did you really help my nan providing all sorts of equipment that she needed yeah. completely free of charge, but yeah. you also have brought this into the public domain. So what more powerful can, thing than there be than getting the community talking? And it's about being a community organiser. That's yes. one of the most amazing like, forms of social, of, uh, from 
social media engineering I think I've ever seen the way that just went viral yeah, yeah. I've got a debate with uh, from the mayoral team at the moment whether the mayor should be allowed to, uh, to do the ice bucket challenge or not because it's not considered <laughs> to be dignified oh, well. <laughs> it was very great yeah thank you so much and uh, let me just go to the director of slum aid tell me how COVID have actually affected your business, your organisation, wow. and what you're expecting from the community and the viewers to be able to know about it. Please. Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question, yes. and uh, I think we we had to talk about COVID anyway. Of course, right? we had to. Um, we because we work in partnership with uh, local charities that operate in Asia, in India and Bangladesh, but also in Africa, uh, in uh, Kenya, Sierra Leone, Ghana, and uh, Nigeria. And uh, of course, we, we were a recruiting agency yeah. for volunteers. We found ourselves lost. And actually, like we lost power because we were trying to support our uh, partners through our volunteers. Yeah. So the main challenge for us was to move everything online yeah. and also uh, to keep the world open in a sense because yeah. um, what happened with lockdowns um, and borders closure is that we all stay in our own communities. I this know. is what we have to do. Um, and as much as uh, internet and media connects connects us with mm -hmm. the entire world. Um, the risk for me is that people might feel that now we are just our own little community and we just look at our garden and we don't look outside the world. Well, like uh, as we were discussing before with Madam Mayor, we were saying that like, um, like you cannot um, uh, like you have to, you have to develop a, a world vision because pandemic is. It means that everyone in the world is affected by uh, by this disease, by uh, everything, every consequence that the pandemic caused. Uh, it's also important, I think, that we remember that uh, words yeah. have a different meanings yes, in different does. parts of the world. I know. And what I've seen, like speaking with the directors of the local charity we partner with, yeah. um, is that, that when we were talking about lockdowns and yeah. self-isolation, it, it was like we were talking about completely different things because you have to consider communities that are based on day-to-day um, earnings economies and lockdown truly impacted um, these, these sort of economies. So all the progresses I think that local charities had reached, the risk is that now that communities go back, uh, like maybe 50 years back, um, there are entire categories of population in these yes. deprived areas that risk to be left behind. Yeah. Um, everyone in like in, in the Western world um, readapted to online sort of activities, right? Uh, children, in a sense, still received education because they were able to access Wi-Fi and internet connections. But there are so many parts in the world where this is not possible or this is extremely hard. Yeah. So um, I think it like the challenge for us is to convince people to look outside of course. and to reach of out course. and and to see that like we really need to be in these in this like we are in this pandemic all together yes, and we are. inequality shouldn't shouldn't increase um, after this although I fear it's it's possible that this is going to happen thank you so much for what you stated i do understand the covid has been very very devastating to everybody both the community both the businesses and we're willing to make sure we work hard to you know make all the tremendous hard work be the main aim isn't it you know Absolutely. improving ourselves our skills every aspect of ourselves so that we can cope with the struggles of you know being a professional isn't it yeah right <laughs> <laughs> the worshipful mayor of croydon councillor maddie 
Hansen. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mouthful, mm -hmm. but you know, I've just basically pronounced it properly right now, and then I just want to just give you this uh, uh, this assurance. If you're not here in this interview, can you tell me what you'll be doing right now? Well, quite specifically, originally before this invitation came in, I was going to go and visit one of the food banks in Croydon. Uh, from one of the things I have been doing is doing do. I off asked my office to write to all of the food banks we had uh, from record and contact details for and find out if they would be in any way useful to them to have a mayoral visit to help promote the work they're doing. Yes. And then the least that, uh, from, as that the council's representative I could do was uh, from to say thank you for from the work they've been doing to carry us through the last few months. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a visit scheduled at this exact moment. Yeah. Uh, from, so I got the office to phone them up and, and, and <laughs> grovel on my behalf, <laughs> essentially. And they've rearranged to win to Saturday uh, from, on the hope that I, and I've agreed to bring a really massive donation with me when I come to make it up to them. <laughs> Oh, that would be great. That was lovely. Um, I also want to ask a question, you know, how you are a leader, a woman, you know, how does it, how are you able to manage and work within being Madam Mayor? It is difficult, and I'm the youngest woman ever to do this role in Croydon history. Congratulations! Uh, Congratulations from, to thank Madam you. Mayor. Uh, from and it is a challenge, and I've said about kind of being a mum and yes. being a counsellor as being the two most important parts of my identity. But obviously, I'm also a, um, a wife, and I've also got a business. Yes. So there are loads of different aspects to who, what I do and who I am. But the truth is, as I said, you take each individual day as it comes, and uh, from just make sure that. The, when you go through the, the diary and the schedule for every day, they make sure that nobody or nothing's got forgotten. Uh, from our sons, Theo and Liam, have, in fairness, and they've never known any other life but the, where mummy and daddy are involved in local politics and uh, from going out canvassing all the time and uh, from going out and being involved in these community organisations. Yeah. And so that that's their, to them is the norm. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, it's, though it is a quite a challenge for them because they have to share their mum with all these other causes, it does bring them a lot of opportunities as well. And some of the experiences they could have had, because they come along to a lot of engagements with me when they're not at school or nursery. Yes. Uh, from, so it has mutual benefits to them. Uh, from just very lucky that they are quite understanding children. <laughs> they're saying they're only six and two. Six and two. Yes. They're really, really young. Very and, young. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate you being a career lady, a professional, and I think you give us all leaders uh, <laughs> a way of saying thank you so much for for being Madam Mayor and for creating that chances for ladies as well? Uh, from, there is a problem with under, uh, from not enough women, particularly young women yes. entering politics. Uh, from, I think it's a very established fact uh, yeah. from that it's been a very male-dominated industry. Yes. And it's because it can be a very, it can and by its very nature be a very cut and thrust and very difficult and uh, from historically very male and macho world. And though you've got to be strong, because you've got to um, put your opinion and make sure people understand the reason why you've got the views you have, yeah. there's no reason why it has to be vicious. Yeah. Uh, from, and I personally think that women are very good at this job. Uh, from, oh. And I really do think that more women should get involved in it. Don't let people tell you that it's, a male dom it's too male dominated, because it isn't, and we need more women. And I would like to be talking now to Madam Mayor, and then I'll be uh, asking her about uh, women education. So Madam Mayor, what do you think about women education and what do we need to do in order to you know, elaborate it and implement it a lot more effectively? Uh, from, well, I think I pick up from the where I left off, essentially, that uh, from there has been, there is a problem of women to not getting involved in their communi in their community and sense of the civic part, like through uh, from political standing. And so I'm, I'm very lucky that I've got uh, from, I stood when I stood with election as an all women pa uh, from panel last time. Yeah. Female panel, there aren't many of them where it's all women standing in a ward. Oh. It's still very, very rare. Uh, from, and good. I've got a female MP and uh, from the, I think that in itself shows that women are very uh, well placed to do this uh, role yes. uh, from and, and with politics with a small p as I said I've got to be politically neutral I can't take can't talk party politics of or course. policy issues but the uh, um, it's a uh, from an obvious fact that kind of uh, from 
some parties are better at it than others, but they are from. We've we've only ever had two female prime ministers. That must that's not good. That, that <laughs> is not good. But uh, we hope for improvement. Yes. And that's the reason why we're here. You know, to encourage young ladies to go into you know different types of departments and yes. being leaders in, yeah, in the exactly. industry uh, full of men. Yeah. You know, so we I need to saw a stat once them. that there are more CEOs around the world called John than there are women. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that, but you know. <laughs> that just stuck, it just stuck with me. I thought, it says yeah. a lot. <laughs> that says a lot, doesn't it? That's, yeah, that definitely, definitely say a lot. <laughs> so, um, Director of Slum Age, just tell us about what you think about education and women integrated, and especially, yes. you know, what advice you'll give to them to yeah. get to do exactly what you're doing right now. I think what we have seen um, over the years is that there are two phases of uh, like women involvement yes. in um, community development. Uh, from one perspective, there is the fact that women volunteers more, for instance. Yeah. We have mainly women traveling by themselves, going in the private areas, helping. Like They want to reach out, and they usually reach out more than, than men. But this is not just to say, OK, women are better. I think it's... Um, it's it's a different sensitivity and it's a different way of approaching change. Um, in a sense, women need to adapt so much during their life because they have like all their yes. identities mm. together. They have yes, to they come um, and like to make peace <laughs> one <laughs> one to each other. So it's it's really like it's 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 a powerful uh, aspect I think of of being a woman. And on the other hand, there is the fact that we have seen that uh, supporting projects that uh, have mainly women as beneficiaries um, and young girls brings an incredible improvement in communities. Yes, it does. Um, if, you, if you run a school, you'll see that moms are involved with the education of the children. If you educate the children, you are also educating the mother. Yes, you are. Um, Everywhere in every like in every projects we have in Africa, we have always this like uh, sensitivity. We, we we want to be more involved with projects yes. that um, give a voice to women. Yes, we do. And we we really think that education is the key. Yes, education yes. is the key to empowerment. Um, I can share a little bit of my of my personal experience uh, on these when I I started. Uh, as a volunteer in, uh, okay. in Islam Aid. So um, I volunteered for two years in, uh, it was India because that was. Uh, was, was but it, I was think. It, was it paid voluntary? No, it's, it's it was, unpaid, yes. So it was uh, like I, I, I crowdfunded myself. Okay. Um, and uh, I was able to stay in, in, in Islam in Mumbai for two months, running a class um, for um, teenagers girls and, and, and boys. And I went back, and this was five years ago. I went back um, before the pandemic, actually. I was uh, in Mumbai in February. And my students, my girls' students, they were all going to college. Yes. Only one was married. Um, and she married when she was 18. So it means that, in a sense, they, she waited until she finished high school. So it's, it's still something, because yes. when, we, when we talk about these like, deprived areas, both in Asia and, and in Africa, we have to think about child marriage. Yes. And so, um, and all the stigma against uh, menstruation and um, uh, female genital mutilation and yes. everything. Thing that that brings um, to like that brings girls to drop out of school. I know. So when we when we um, approach these issues, we have to like to have an holistic way of, of seeing everything, and we really think that education is the key. Like yes, it's the it key is. that connects yes. everything, and that really, really, really brings uh, like has to a different way of, of, of seeing things. I think I guess. Well, thank you very much. Um, Madam Mayor, I would like to ask you about equality and diversity. It's really, really important in schools. And I know as Madam Mayor, 
that is one of the things also that your that your um, charity will be looking into making sure that you know everybody knows about equality and diversity so tell us a little bit about that right well uh, from firstly I really couldn't agree more that education is <laughs> <these> things <laughs> yeah there's a secret yeah. to everything uh, from there is literally no nothing more important than a society can do for as a duty yes. than look after the generation that will come after you. Yes. That's probably yeah. the one of the main reasons why I've chosen the theme I have of early life. Yeah. Because there is nothing more important that we can do than prepare the next generation to have a better life than we've had. Yeah. Uh, from in terms of quality and diversity, Croydon uh, from is an in Incredible place, and it really. If you ever, anyone ever tries to tell you that multiculturalism yes, is in yes. any way not a good thing, I, I would point them to Croydon. Croydon has got so many different communities, so many different people from different experiences, different walks of background, different lives, yes. different countries, and it thrives. It's and a it wonderful thrives. borough, and I am so proud to have come from there, and even more proud to be the mayor of my hometown, the yeah. town that gave me birth, that gave me two children. Gave me school, gave me my education, gave me my home, making my husband, and it's just been the making of me. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah. Now we go to the director of Slum Aid. I would like to ask you, what are you, what are you looking for in the next five years? You know, okay. in regards to Slum Aid, and what are your aspirations to make sure? And also, I need to talk to you about. CSR, yes. um, and I need you to um, also make the viewers aware of that. Yes, sure. So, um, the big question when the pandemic started for Slumade was so now what do we do? How do yeah. we help from here, from home? And so we, we haven't invented anything, but we just thought that London, with its diversity and multiculturality, it can be a great place where to start um, to find connections between the business sector and the charity sector. Yes. So, um, and there is where CSR um, comes um, because CSR, corporate social responsibility, yeah. uh, it's a way for companies to. Uh, we say like simply giving something back, but it's, mu it's way more than that. I think, especially in London, where you have people of different backgrounds, and and I think yes. that many employees in, in even in bigger companies, they might want to like to give something back to the communities they came from, or uh, that is that they have a particular connection with. So what we uh, what we want to do is to. Um, to create projects that are right for um, each different company. Yes. Um, we believe in, uh, in grassroots projects. So for us, the needs of our local partners is mm. where we start from. Because one thing we want to avoid is uh, having this like, project impo imposed from above from the Western society into, I think this is like a really, really important. It should be a conversation, not someone telling someone else what to do. Yeah. So I think there is a lot of potential to develop very good projects uh, that can be that run online. Um, local charities in everywhere in the world, they always need uh, training for their teachers, okay. training for their local staff, uh, staff management um, suggestions. So you're expecting companies to have skills uh, that they can be able to give to the volunteers? Exactly. So okay. we, more than the resources, I mm. think that anyone employed in a company, in whatever company you can think about, um, they have skills, they have professional skills skills that they can donate. Yes. And donating skills is the easiest thing you can do because once you have a skill, it's part of yourself. Mm, of course. So um, I think if, if, like, if companies are able to, um, to see these as like, just not as a local help, yes. but to go outside the UK um, 
with the chances that we have now because now that we have become like also used to uh, to work online and to yes. do things we were not able to do before online I think this uh, this is like the, the right time to focus on these um, so any companies working in social media marketing for instance that's something local charities needs uh, need a lot um, yes. and also I and I think it's a benefit for like it creates um, beneficial outcomes for everyone not just like the charities that receive um, that receive these uh, this help this support I think on the other hand you also have companies and employees feeling part of a project feeling that they are doing they're working together on something else that is not creating profit mm -hmm. um, which apart from everything that said yeah. like okay team building and anything yes. but I think there is really something more yes. on these and um, there is a great potential There's so potential. any company interested <laughs> in uh, in yes. what we do we have re we really have a great range of, of projects we um, and we are there to help in every step that I think what we win on the fact that we are small yes. and so we have time to dedicate to our project and be sure that the project is successful for both of the uh, like benefactor and beneficiary if we want to call it like this. Oh thank you director. Mm -hmm. I would like to go back to Madam Mayor. Um, I know you talked about all your awesome charity and your support can you tell us about your personal aim and also where you see yourself in the next five years after becoming Madam Mayor? Well, a personal aim, obviously I've touched quite a bit on my passion, which is early life. So yes. the, every mayor sets a theme yes. for the year. Sometimes it is their charities, yeah. sometimes it's uh, from businesses. For me, it is about early years. It's about everything about uh, from those early life, those early moments where we're setting the scene for the future life. That for, from is a passion for me. Uh, from uh, from example, some of the examples I've done things I've done with that just slightly diverging other something called the Reading Road Shows, which were a series of free socially distanced picnics I put on in the from the parks around right. Croydon. Okay. Perfectly so COVID secure, so we checked everybody's temperatures. We uh, from kept everybody in their own groups. Yes. Uh, from and we had some of the local, some local authors come and read to the children and we had council services dotted around the outside to uh, from provide people with those kind of informal chats. Yeah. Uh, from, in terms of five years, obviously you are elected for four years at a time. I would like to think that I'll be a councillor still but obviously that is down to the electorate to make that decision and when it comes to it. Uh, from, I would like to think that uh, from, I will hold different roles within kind of like the council and be able to kind of put some of my beliefs in the early years and putting the work up the groundwork I've done as Madam Mayor onto that uh, from passion but uh, from p politics is an interesting game so it's yes, difficult it to kind of think in those terms but that's uh, from what I would like to think that I'll be able to all the things I've learned and been able to do with my passion of the early years yeah to be able to put that into a more policy direction after I finish being there oh that's fantastic thank you and I'll also go back to the director Slamade um I would like to ask you you know you've actually talked about CSR and areas where you think that's very important for your business well tell us you know um as a young woman now that's actually 18 years old and would want to go into charity just give them a, a, a charity open in a charity what are the areas that you think you can actually that you can tell them so that they are able to start up their own uh, business well I think it depends it's really it's it's a really hard questions because giving giving suggestions you feel a responsibility <laughs> I think um, what I've said like before, the fact that when you volunteer, when you start to be involved in a charity, you... So, so you're expecting the young lady, you know, to basically volunteer and yes. get to know I think, the aspects of the business. I think, in, I think it's really important for anyone to find their own pro like the projects they believe in yeah when when you volunteer for something you are connected in some way of course. Um, 
you will be more passionate. Yes. And um, and I think that's why it's really also it's really important to give um, young women uh, and girls spaces where they can develop their projects. Uh, it's it's extremely hard to uh, to, to start a charity business, yes. um, but it's not impossible. And um, connections, it's something that helps you. Uh, you really need to go out and see what the world needs. I think um, I think this is a like a really important part of like if someone wanted to uh, to, to start a new charity. But anyway, like I th the, I think the mo the key is like uh, it's it's passion. The, like you need to you need to be passionate about what you do, and this this is the difference between succeeding and not, and especially especially in the social sector I think you need to be like charities it's it's going to be tough you yes, have to buy the, the like the five years uh, yeah. it's really hard for us to look at like of course we yeah. plan you have to plan you have to plan yeah. five years from now where we'll be yeah. uh, <laughs> where we will be but um, we, we will have to assess every day what is going to happen with the charity sector and uh, um, but I would encourage anyone to start and to, to, to see what's what's around and I think really that like young women can find spaces in charity because again we we have something more maybe we have some more. Uh, so mm. yeah i would suggest go out and look for your uh, for your projects for the project fantastic mm. madam mayor um again we're looking at young people um is there any formal qualification to become a a, a a councillor and and then transition to there's, a mayor. There's nothing specific. There isn't like a degree in uh, from being a local councillor. Yeah. Uh, from obviously some people go, do actually do study politics and uh, from university. So uh, surprisingly, few politicians study politics. Yes. In fact, I was actually given a pretty good bit of advice that I shouldn't study politics at uni. I studied history, which was similar but was separate from it. Uh, from what you do need, though, is you really do need to have a passionate investment in your community that you want to represent. Because there's no point in being a in saying being a councillor just for the sake of kind of the prestige of it, because you're not doing anything. Yes. Uh, from the whole point about the role of the local council developing over sort of the history, where the role which we have as a society fought for the right to have, uh, and fought for the right to have democracy, is so you've got a voice, someone that is your champion. So what you do need is to really believe in what in you, your position on life, yes. and you also really need to have be driven hard to do, to achieve things and to actually make the world a better place. In such, uh, what, and loads okay. and loads of people okay. have different views about what that would look like, and that's why we have such passion political debates. Yeah. Uh, from, but the thing that connects you together is that belief and that desire to kind of make the world a better place in the way you see it. Yes. Uh, from. And I'd like to say about believing in the value of democracy. I mean, people have fought and died for the right to go down, for you to go down the polling station and put an X in the box. Yeah. Uh, from every every X number of months or years. Uh, from so, there is one thing I always say to people: above all else, the first thing and most important thing you've ever got to do is vote. Exactly. Exactly. Voting. Um, especially for young people. Yes. And um, doesn't so. matter what political. You can turn up for your paper if you like. Just make that to. statement that you've exercised your right. Yes, it's it's really really great. I, I know I talked so much about the young women, and um, you know, and um, I need to also talk about the young men. You know, so you know. Um, from your perspective, I know we're women and then we have our outlook and as leadership, you know. We also have young men who will be watching this and would say, okay, I would want to go into this, you know. Can we just have a little things that we can talk about uh, in regards to the young men as well and include them in regards to all the conversation we're having right now? So, Madam Mayor? Uh, well, I start so, as I pointed out, I've got two sons. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, from, uh, my, my eldest Theo is, as I said, six, but he's yes. more like six going on 16. Yes. Yeah, from, 
he inc- he clearly see that he's been had that his entire life surrounded by politicians. He walks into the room and he owns the room. Wow. Uh, from, I remember when my youngest was a newborn, going and getting him weighed at the health clinic. Uh, from and came out of the sort of side of the clinic where they were weighing the baby, and he with Theo, and he walked out ahead of me. And the room had gone from being quite quiet to being full of these uh, from primarily mums and new babies, but fa- a lot of fathers as well. And he stopped at the door, looked around, and went like this, went, and then projected from the diaphragm at the top of his voice, all your babies are so cute. <laughs> uh, from an understandably had the kind of like room eating out of his hand. But the fact mm-hmm. is that uh, from the passions for young men yeah. are no different from the passions that are required for women. Yeah. Or you to get involved in the, the, your local party, in your local community, yeah. in whatever, some of it's through the charity sector, through it's through politics, whether it's through a, a positive business that's going to make a difference to community. You just have to have a passion for whatever that thing is that you're yeah. doing. You yes. just have to believe in it. Um, it's, life is hard work, quite often. Uh, from, and so, so it doesn't always, it, it, it does throw you some very, very challenging times. As I said right at the beginning, 2013 was a very difficult time for me. Uh, my nan was obviously passed, was dying of motor neurons. Well, so my grandfather was having had uh, from dementia and Lewy bodies, and they end up dying within ten days of each other. Oh, okay. And I had a very, very, very difficult pregnancy with Theo. I had a condition called HG, which is the same condition that uh, from Kate Middleton suffers with. So you are sick regularly, multiple times a day. Oh. Uh, from there are loads of things. It's one of those years. You know, one of those years where you just think, like, how much more can possibly happen? But uh, from the fact is. I got through it. I had, yeah. was very lucky. I had a lot of support network of people around me. But lots of, but really, life is difficult. There are times when you really do feel like you're, you've hit rock bottom. But the sun does come up again. Yes. Uh, from there is always a time when yeah. things are better. So for in six years, I went from the lowest I was ever was to being mayor of my hometown. <laughs> so which is, which is congratulations to you, and yeah. we're really, really happy that you're able to transition. And I know you're going to do a good job. And um, we are all rooting for you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It does mean a lot. Uh, from, I might be able to talk a lot, but the truth yeah. of the matter is that whatever people might like to believe are politicians, most of them are as nervous about public speaking and going on the camera I as know. anyone else I is. Know. I so know. it's really nice it's, when it's people been a people pleasure. Can give you that inspiration. And yeah. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Okay, let's go to you, Director Slamaid. Please tell everybody, because uh, she's here. Um, in regards to CSR and we are able to promote and make sure that companies can support uh, and provide different types of departments and I'm here to make sure that she's able to give her mm-hmm. outlook on it so please I'll, tell it. I'll go back to the including young yes. men as well yes uh, because we have to say they are a resource as well so. yes um, I think um, I think it's really important, and there are uh, this type of experience, like working together on a project. Um, it I think it might give young men and young women the possibility to uh, talk to each other more. Like I, I envision uh, employees. It doesn't matter the gender. Uh, it doesn't matter the political views. Uh, but if employees, they are all linked by a skill that they want to share with someone in need. Yeah. Um, and actually, what I think, um, like, maybe sometimes um, men's opinions are listened more, are uh, heard more. So it could be like, Women using these could yeah. also be a good a good way to move forward yes. to achieve what you need. So um, I think there there needs to be a dialogue. And as much as we are able to create spaces and like where there is this dialogue, and uh, as Madam Mayor said, like you are a mom of two young boys, so you want them to behave and become the best version of themselves. Exactly. And, and I think they need an, ex- an exchange with a dialogue with anyone. And yeah, they do. Um, so I think, and also like I have to say that when we will be back to travel again, um, young men are a resource because um, 
it's easier for them to travel as well in some places yes. around the world. Yes. Um, so they should really, really use this uh, because it's, uh, it's, it's something that helps them, like the gender helps, unfortunately. Uh, and as much as I am for equal opportunities, and I, I always tell women, go and <laughs> like, don't be scared. Yes. You can do it. Yes, uh, definitely. It's also like there is an issue with, uh, with gender, like the gender of volunteers sometimes. So uh, if you are a young boy, if you are a young man, do what you can do and use your uh, um, your privileges, I would say. And wow. your passion. And, and your, your passion, passion. And, and your passion, your passion. yes. Yeah, I, I would actually say something because I'm from Croydon. <laughs> Best place to be and from. <laughs> and, um, and I'm here with Mother Mayo and it's been a pleasure to have you it's and been a pleasure being here. with you in regards to your own attributions and contributions and family, career, putting everything together and, and becoming the best leader we all need to be. And uh, we'd like to say thank you so much for this. And thank you. Um, you know, but however, you know, you promise you're gonna be coming back to the program, do you, <laughs> Madam Mayor? Yeah, of course I will. Whenever I'm invited, <laughs> I'll be happy to come Oh, back. great. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. And then we've got the Director of Slum Aid, and um, I'm so happy what you're doing, because what you're doing, you're helping everybody. You're helping both the youths, you're helping both the young men, young women, you know, adults, you know, um, anyone that needed to become a start of a charity, you know, create a yeah. voluntary aspect, because that's what we need to do. People always think much more about paid job, but I would actually say volunteering first, getting to know your job first, and then get to uh, uh, improve on having to, you know, encourage and get the job. That is the most important right now because what it is is that volunteering is being, uh, you know, not a lot of people take it very seriously. But I come from volunteering. I volunteered for five years before actually starting this in college. And then, you know, for me, it's been a journey and I needed those experiences. And um, I was not paid a penny, <laughs> you know, so I do advocate for volunteer, voluntary. And, um, you know, we all need to understand understand the level of appreciation especially when you volunteer and help a business so we're really really happy about this the last thing I would like to say is um, we are um, Madam Mayor um, what um, when you as we're speaking to the viewers you know um, if any if any business or anything wants to contact you um, what are the uh, where and what's the communication they need to contact you right with? if you want uh, to make contact with the mayoral team the best thing to do is to email the dot mayor so it's t h e dot m a y o r at croydon.gov.uk and there are an amazing team of officers that uh, from monitor the inbox and will put uh, from any invitations and contact in front of my face and say, Madam Mayor, will you be interested in doing this? Uh, from, and I very rarely say no. And thought, but if I can't do it, I've got an incredible deputy called Sherwin, who uh, from represents me as well. Yes. And we are very happy to attend as many things we can with them. They have a connection with Croydon and champion the incredible work that Croydonians are doing. Definitely. Thank you. And then the director of Slum Aid, yeah. just tell me if that is If anything. anyone interested, if they can go on our website, yes. slumaid.org, or just send us an email at hello at slumaid.org. So they, they can find all the information, and we are happy to provide anything they need. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, another thing I would like to say is that um, I know everybody has got the communication and um, we also need to talk a little bit about um, the aspect that's been happening in the world. You know, um, I know we talked about COVID, you know. Um, do, have we heard when the vaccine will be available? And then, <laughs> Madam Mayor, when is the vaccine I, will be available? I don't have any so more knowledge that, than you, know. you do. <laughs> uh, from, yeah. And I know the, some of the cleverest human beings alive are working round yes. the clock to develop the vaccine. Uh, yeah. from, we put a society, our faith entirely in the shoulders of these extraordinary men and women that are working I on know. this. Uh, from, but 
what the time frame is is more is far more difficult to predict I don't think even the experts will know because it obviously so much depends on how the trials work out on uh, from how the spread of the disease carries on what form that takes but uh, the best thing that we can do as a society is follow the guidelines uh, from wear your masks stay socially different yes. stay safe wash your hands for at least 20 seconds and stay safe everybody <laughs> yeah definitely and then yeah the question as well um, <sighs> Again, it's really hard to predict anything at this I moment. Um, what like we are seeing now is that um, in some countries where we where we operate, uh, yeah. where our local charities uh, are, um, they now actually need more help than than before because mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning there was this um, immediate reaction so food distribution um, but now now the hard part is to um, educate people on following the guidelines in countries where it's not that easy to keep the social distance um, overcrowded parts of the world and slum areas usually are yeah. um, so I think that now the next step is while we wait for a vaccine and yeah. while we understand um, how this will be distributed because uh, in like from from a social perspective from from charity perspective what we fear is that no one like not everybody will have access yeah. uh, immediately to to the vaccine so um, for us it's really important now that we think about um, how we support uh, the local charities providing them the means to uh, to follow the guidelines so that local charities can go like can start uh, again with their activities following guidelines not risking anyone's life and so that we we adapt for a while for as long as it's needed to uh, to this different world we live in and hopefully maybe in the future we will be able to go back to our normal uh, life but for now it's really important that we understand that in here uh, everywhere else in the yes. world <laughs> guidelines and uh, like respecting social distancing is, is very important so before we go because we're getting to the end of the program. I wanted to ask you, um, you talked about Africa, people traveling, and how it's affected um, them in volunteering. You know, um, Can you tell me a little bit about the areas of um, which particular um, country in Africa you're, yeah. you're referring to? So we, um, we work in partnership with charities in uh, Ghana. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, the charity we support, uh, Dunk, is uh, incredible because they are young. W what are they called? Uh, Dunk, D-U-N-K. Okay. And uh, they are all young, very young. They. Um, um, they support uh, community change through sports, mm -hmm. so they allow um, girls and boys to play together, so they work in difficult areas, deprived areas. Uh, then we work in, uh, we, in partnership with um, a charity in uh, Sierra Leone um, that was funded by um, a child soldier, so I admire this person so much. He came through so much, and now he provides education to Islam children in Kenya, where like Kenya is uh, at the moment, they are experiencing some difficult because difficulties because um, schools will reopen in 2021. I know, and so children have lost so much. They will repeat the year. Yeah. Um, they, will, they will repeat uh, the year. Entirely. So for like for the local charity we support, this was a big issue yeah. because then it means like not being able to paying the local staff. Uh, you don't have like you, you might have less donations, less like you are not able to to provide help to street kids. So it's like it's it's a chain of uh, of, of issues that developed from the pandemic that. Uh, 
um, that local charities ha have to deal with. Yeah. Um, and then we work with um, with a charity uh, in uh, in Nigeria, and um, they work in a rural area, mm -hmm. um, mainly in the correct me Enugu. Enugu, Enugu okay. okay. Imo state. Uh, yes. Okay, Anambra state, I think. <laughs> Well, so, it's, 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 it's some state, it's a good state. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they work yes, in I, that. I am, I'm actually very excited about this because when you call Nigeria, because, um, you know, yeah. I, I, I am very excited because I do help there as well. And uh, originally my parents are from mm -hmm. um, Nigeria, so and I'm from Nigeria as well, and I'm a proud Nigerian. I think yeah. uh, <laughs> we were really happy to start this partnership because... Um, is is the, it the, the same the, company, the, Dong? Uh, no, same. it's called Sierp. Um, okay. And um, they do an amazing job for um, prevention of mm, mm, dropouts of school. Okay. So they mainly focus uh, on girls um, that mm, who mainly leave school because they don't go when they have menstruation. So they provide menstrual kits. They do a lot of work. They wow. have. They run a lot of campaigns, and that's where we think that like. CSR departments, they could really help Nigeria, this Nigeria charity because uh, they really need help with their um, social campaigns. And these, these really, really impact on girls' lives. So I think everyone can help. Everyone can yes. impact on others' everyone lives. Can yeah, help. definitely. Okay, thank you so much, the Worshipful, the Mayor of Croydon, Councillor Maddie Hansen. It's a pleasure having you on Center Point Africa with Nikki. And I wish you come back again because we'll be having programs and programs, and um, we will we'll be uh, lovely to have you. I'll be honored. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Yeah. And then Julie Pepper, thank you very, very thank much. Thank you for having me. And thank you so much for you know all the wonderful things you've been doing and i hope you, you carry on doing all those and uh, we're really happy to have you also uh, we might be inviting you back again just to Thank know you. what you've been doing so that remember would be a you know <laughs> that would be a pleasure <laughs> for us to have you so this is nikki emily k uh center point africa with nikki is runs on thursdays 3 to 4 p.m please tune in exciting news we talk about education we talk about international politics politics, politics, and mostly community development, which is what we covered today. And we have exciting, exciting people who, gonna be, who are actually going to be attending. So please tune in. Thank you, Nikki Emelike, CEO of Nisden College, Centerpoint Africa, with Nikki. Thank you.